A warm welcome, and here is a fossil ammonite that I found and prepared, preserved in calcite. Let's go fossil collecting at Axmouth at low tide, and I'll show you some sea urchins. Let's go fossil collecting today. Well, it's a really cold day down at Axmouth Harbour. I'm going fossil collecting for sea urchin specimens. That's what I'll get along this part of the coast at low tide. Well, let's go down to the sea and have a look at where the fresh water from the Axmouth Harbour runs out into the sea. There you can see it flowing really quite freely down to the sea. And when the tide comes back in and the height is higher, the boats will come in and out, the fishing boats. I've just spied a crow. That looks like it's come down towards my sandwiches. I left them in a napkin. I wrapped them up before I came down to film this little bit for you. That crow's heading straight towards... Yeah, that crow's got my lunch. Ah, oh, where are they going with that? I'm heading east back towards Lyme Regis from Axmouth Harbour. It's a very low tide today. You can see the tide's right out. It'll give me plenty of area to walk on and I'll avoid the slippery weedy patches. There's a big block of Rochelaria on the beach. They look like ammonites, but they're not. A beautiful calm day before Christmas. It's early December, but it's absolutely freezing out here. I've spotted a fossil sea urchin down here, a bit water-worn by the sea's actions, the attrition of the sand and sea, but can you see the one that I spotted? I'll give that a tap a bit later on. Okay, I've spotted another fossil sea urchin down here. Can you spot it as I head towards it? A bit water worn once again. I think a lot of them are worse for wear down here. The attrition of the sand and sea, grinding them away. All this sand in big stormy gale days, grinding against all these fossils. There's a sea urchin in there. It's cold today. Let's put my hood up. Whew. Well, I've got my safety glasses on and I'm going to have a tap at this sea urchin with a geological hammer. And the rock can splinter like glass and is very sharp. So I've got sturdy gloves on too. But uh, this sea urchin doesn't appear to be wanting to pop out of the rock. It seems to be very well fused with the rock. And that sometimes happens too. So some of the fossil breaking videos you see where I just get a sea urchin relieved from the rock quite readily. Those are the lucky days. This one is fused solid to the stone. So sadly, that one's not coming out. Well, I've got a plastic model of an ammonite here to show you the morphology of the ammonite. And then I've got another one here from Burton Bradstock, a Stephanosaurus ammonite. And some of the ammonites were creatures that were grabbing their prey and they were predators that would sort of pounce on their prey. And that's quite a interesting thinking because they weren't scavengers those particular ones and some went through the water quite fast you see the fine ribbing there on those ammonites that fine ribbing that ornament uh, would break up the sea as it went through fast and uh, you can imagine them traveling quite quickly using a siphuncle for jetting out water and then shooting through the water and then grabbing different things like small ichthyosaurs and fish, especially the big ammonites. And a chap talking to me recently, he was studying ammonite ribbing so he could use the evolution of ammonite ribs to help him with his underwater craft, submersibles he's building. And he's doing that work in America. And that's really cutting edge work he's doing. And uh, some of the sort of ammonites like this with bigger ornament on those ribs much bigger would hold themselves in the water column quite nicely but they wouldn't be as fast as one like this where it would break up the water 
and that helped that ribbing helped it break up the water as it traveled through fast and then there are other creatures like the nautilus that would have been really good with its gravity in the water it was built really well and never really had to change much over the course of time and its gravity in the water with its particular type of shell held it up very well and uh, so lots of study now being done on ammonites and nautilus to help people build underwater craft and uh, it was a fascinating conversation with this chap i don't think i understood absolutely all the practicalities because he's at the cutting edge of doing this work but uh, what an interesting little time I had. Can you spot the shell on the really large lump of rock here? A fossil shell there. The tide's racing back in over this shell you can see. Here comes the sea. It's nice to leave on that rock for everyone to see. It will only get worn and washed away but it's a nice one for people to walk along the beach at low tide and see. Well, some of you will be fossil hunting at Christmas around Lyme Regis and along the Jurassic coast. And here is a bit of fossil ID, a para ammonite. You also get the ammonites preserved in calcite. It's the guard of the sea creature, the belemnite. There's part of one of the belemnites there. You can see a plastic model in one hand and a little specimen of belemnite in my other hand. Everyone wants to find the backbone of an ichthyosaur when they come fossil collecting along the Jurassic coast. There's some ground down by the sea's actions. You can see there two little articulated ichthyosaur backbones. Fossil sea lily stems, the animal related to the starfish, crinoids. You find lovely ossicles of those on the beach if you really look hard enough. There's a little piece, probably part of a cup a crinoid cup. Fossil oyster shells, the devil's toenails they were known as, back with myth and legend surrounding them. They would have sat there filter feeding on the seafloor like so. It's part of one of the fossils we call an ammonite biscuit, one preserved in the beef rock. Fossilized wood, monkey puzzle tree, got out into the deep sea marine environment, fell to the seafloor and fossilized with branches with cones on at times. Well, look at that bone there, ground down by the sea. You can see the blood vessels there, filled with white calcite. And here is a little ichthyosaur jaw. You can see the null teeth in that jaw socket. A small gastropod fossil find there from the Jurassic era and a little ammonite there, preserved with some of the coloration left on the outside of the shell. I'll try and get a close-up. And here's what I was hunting for today, a fossil sea urchin. A sea urchin preserved in the flint rock. And my ones are too well fused to the rock to pop out of the rock. Even tapping them with the hammer didn't spring them out. Sometimes they're just too well fused to the rock. And this one here was found loose on the beach, ground down by the sea's action, but still a nice fossil flint sea urchin from the Cretaceous era. And also too from the Cretaceous, a fossilized sponge there you can see. Well, look at these lovely tea green mulls and Triassic areas of the cliff. Well, I hope you enjoyed that little bit of fossil identification and that will help you with your finds if you make some. Well, I'm trudging back towards Axmouth Harbour to show you the sights and sounds. Really good fun along this stretch. Here's, here's a coconut and a slipper limb bit. wonder what island that's from. Good old slipper limb bits. The tide is well on its way in now as I head back into Axmouth Harbour and I'll show you some of the nice boats and harbour area. Well, there's that crow there up ahead that ate my lunch. And you can still see ice on the ground. And it's late afternoon and it's still icy. Here at Crunch as I come over the ice. Yeah, did you enjoy my lunch? Yep. A 
I found a few fossils, not many. Well, you can get a good toasted sandwich in Axmouth Harbour Cafe anyway, and I'll show you down towards the old bridge. A lot of work going on down in the harbour itself with the fishermen operating out of it. And then I'll go back to the car and show you the Axe Estuary. A lot of different wading birds and lots of birds on the Axe Estuary, especially at low tide. A lot of people come to stop and view all of this beautiful area. It's very accessible and there's lots of car parking as well. I've parked my old Kango Authentic 2003 in a nice space that I always get just alongside the road. And then it gives you the nice walk down to Axmouth Harbour. There's the old car. I think it's good recycling, keeping that 2003 specimen going and uh, keeping it roadworthy. I've used it for a long, long time. So uh, best not to uh, do anything else than use what I've got. So thanks very much for watching. I hope you enjoyed this short fossil collecting film.